population harvested from 8,000 feet below the Earth's surface. DNA Force is an exclusive antioxidant formula loaded with the compound BioPQQ, which is backed by 175 clinical studies. Both of those are available at 25% off at InfoWarsLife.com. That's a show special. And again, that is with free shipping. That is part of our thank you for your support over the years, uh, part of our Money Bomb specials. Uh, Wayne, when we had the, uh, the debate the other night, one of the things that they were talking about, of course, was the decision to go into Iraq, which everybody can look at right now and pretty much understand was a big mistake. Everyone except Jeb Bush, that is. Because Jeb Bush defended this, and he says, you remember, here's a quote uh, from the transcript, you remember the rubble, uh, the rumble, I think is what it says. It says that on the transcript. I don't know. I'm assuming he's saying the rubble, uh, but that might be a Bushism or it might be a typo in the uh, transcript. You remember the rumble or the rubble? He said, you remember the firefighter with his arms around it? I guess that's rubble then. He sent a clear signal that the United States would be strong and fight Islamic terrorism and he did keep us safe. My brother did. <laughs> Do you think he kept us safe, Wayne? Or have well, we I, become much, much more at risk with what's gone on in the Middle East as well as what's gone on in our own country? The overthrow of the rule of law, the militarization of the police, the destruction of the Constitution and the legal system. All of those things have made us more dangerous, in my opinion. I, I would imagine you would agree. Yeah, well, Jeb, of course, has been opposed to the legalization of marijuana in the state of Florida, yes. probably because he wants more of it for himself. It sounds like <laughs> he's smoking a lot of it because I, I don't know how in the world this guy could say his brother W kept us safe. And, and using the, uh, the, the symbology of the collapsed uh, World Trade Center uh, is not the way to say that his brother kept us safe because his brother ignored <laughs> repeated warnings about the terrorist uh, yeah. attack. Uh, we yes. know that from, uh, fr from a National Security Council uh, documents and, and all kinds of reports beforehand. So, And the stand down uh, of NORAD on that day. I mean, they had a complete collapse of all the systems, so his brother kept us safe? You know, yeah, uh, his that... brother was re was uh, more interested in my pet goat at a, in a second class, second grade yeah. class in Sarasota, Florida, if I yeah. recall correctly. And and uh, basically, uh, uh, you know, when Dick Cheney said, "Don't come back to Washington until later on in the day," Bush, who for, <laughs> I guess forgot he was commander in chief, decided to go hide in a hole in the ground in in uh, outside Omaha, Nebraska. So. Yeah, he wasn't asking, where's NORAD, you know, for 100 minutes. It's like, hey, wh you know, where are the NORAD planes? No, no, you know, that's one of the things that uh, uh, Gore Vidal said. He said, uh, of course, related to Al Gore family, his, his dad was highly connected in uh, the military, had set up the NORAD defense system. He said, I knew there was something phony about this because they didn't scramble any planes for an hour and a half. Nothing happened. I mean, obviously, this was a stand down, and obviously, these failures were not only a obvious lie. He can't defend the lies of the Bush administration to get us into Iraq. Even if you start with the lies about 9-11, going to Iraq was another set of fresh new lies that they piled on top of that. Absolutely. And, and this is why uh, people like Bush, uh, Jeb Bush says, uh, what 28 pages? He knows full well what's <laughs> in those 28 pages. He knows it points the finger directly at, at Bandar, Prince Bandar, the Saudi ambassador, to Washington during 9-11, who was so close to his family, the Bush family, they called him Bandar Bush. Yeah. Uh, and when and when you open when you peel back that onion uh, layer, you're gonna find out not only was Prince Bandar involved, but other key members of the Saudi government. And Lindsey Graham sort of who's opposed to the release of the 28 pages, kind of slipped up uh, a couple weeks ago when he said uh, release of those pages would would uh, put our relationship with our allies, use the plural term allies, in the Middle East region in jeopardy. Well, from what I've gathered, and of course nobody can talk about what's in the 28 pages, members of Congress can't even take notes. No, oh, there you go. Yeah. Yet again, we see that. Stay with us. Uh, if, can you stay with us, Wayne? Next segment. We're going to come back. I think we're going to be able to keep uh, Wayne Madsen with us. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, and we're talking to Wayne Madsen. We have him for one more segment. Of course, this is a long segment. I want to talk to Wayne about ISIS. You know, it rhymes with crisis. We got trouble right here in River City. 
That's what we've been told by the GOP endlessly. Pushing ISIS. This is going to, you know, listen to Lindsey Graham. ISIS justifies everything that they do. We can destroy the rule of law. We can spend gazillions of dollars. We can start wars everywhere. You know, because ISIS, that's the magic word. That and national security just wave those words around with a magic wand and they have carte blanche to do anything they want. We're going to talk about the phony narrative that we're being fed on ISIS. I want to break down this history, get some commentary from Wayne Madsen, who uh, analyzes this uh, from an intelligence standpoint. There's been a long, long trail of information that we've gotten. Before we do, I just want to let you know again about the hourly special that we have here. Uh, it's 25% off Survival Shield X2, nascent iodine, and DNA Force. These are the things that we've been doing as part of our money bomb. We've extended the free shipping of the money bomb. We are now extending the process of doing some hourly specials throughout the show. This will uh, end in this uh, hour again. DNA Force is an exclusive antioxidant formula loaded with a compound bio PQQ backed by 175 clinical studies. Listen, we are proud of the ingredients of our products. Unlike the people who are selling you food with GMO and are going to Congress to try to prevent them from telling people what's in their products, we want you to know what's in our products. We want you to know about things like BioPQQ. Look it up, look at the reviews, see what this does for people, what these clinical studies have shown, see what other people are saying with reviews that are on our site. Uh, we don't hide our ingredients. We're proud of them. I would think that people in a market environment, whether they're selling food, whether they're selling supplements, they would want to put stuff in for a competitive advantage that consumers would want. But that's not the way our food system typically works. That's why you need to be careful about what you get. That's why you need to get supplementation. They've taken good stuff like iodine out of the food supply. They try to sneak in things like GMO they know people don't want, and they don't want to have that put on the label. But we are proud of what are in, what's in our ingredients. Again, you can get DNA Force as well as Survival Shield X2 nascent iodine, both 25% off with this hourly special that's at our store. And again, there's a lot of... Uh, Discounts still set up on things that we have not sold out of yet. Brain Force, 20% off. Silver Bullet, 20% off. Oxy Powder and Secret 12, that's our B12 formulation. Those are both 15% off. Free shipping. We are going to uh, keep that through midnight tonight. And Alex has extended these Money Bomb specials until we hit the million dollar mark. But we have a special just for this hour. 25% off. Survival Shield X2 and DNA Force. Wayne, just before they had the debate, there was an article from McClatchy that was put up on the Drudge Report. And I would think that the GOP candidates would look at the Drudge Report, that Jake Tapper or CNN would look at it. But, of course, there was no mention whatsoever about the revelations that the U.S. military trained the top ISIS commander. And this follows a long train of revelations that have been coming out for a couple of years that we've been covering. Do you've been covering? Uh, New American has an article about this. They say, first... There was admission that Obama's anti-ISIS coalition had funded and armed various terrorist groups in Syria that went on to become ISIS. That was Joe Biden admitting that when he spoke at Harvard. He admitted that. Then we had the uh, U.S. Joint Chiefs of Staff Chairman Martin Dempsey said in Senate testimony that Sunni Arab dictators and Obama's anti-ISIS coalition were not only supporting ISIS, they were funding it. Then we found out from a Freedom of Inf Information Act uh, request in 2012, the U.S. Defense Intelligence Agency pointed out that Western powers and their Islamic dictator allies were supporting Islamic terrorists and that they wanted to see a fundamentalist Islamic state created in East Syria. Finally, we had the former chief of the DIA, the Defense Intelligence Agency, go on television, spill the beans on Obama's willful support to Islamic terrorists while distancing himself from the policies. And so this last revelation that we got from McClatchy, which came the day of the debate and was completely ignored about how we trained the top ISIS commander, all of this is being completely ignored, and we have to do everything to get rid of ISIS. Your comments, Wayne. Well, not only that, yesterday we had General Austin, the, the commander of the U.S. Special Operations Command, when asked uh, during uh, his testimony before the Congress, uh, how many of these moderate Syrian rebels have you trained? And he said four or five. <laughs> uh, it, it is, you know, we've spent hundreds of millions of dollars on training these 
so-called moderate rebels in Syria, and he said we've trained four or five. Yeah. But, <laughs> there, we have not trained any mod. There are no moderate uh, Syrian rebels. <laughs> there may be a few, but they're living courtesy of the U.S. taxpayer in four-star hotels in Istanbul and Ankara, Turkey. Uh, they're not fighting the, the any wars against Assad's government from the, the bar at the Intercontinental Hotel in Istanbul. Uh, so uh, we had Petraeus the other day, the convicted criminal David Petraeus, mm -hmm. uh, suggested the U.S. ally with al-Qaeda. He says it's just, what, a week before the 9-11 observances. And he says we should ally with al-Qaeda to fight ISIL. Uh, I got news for this uh, General Petraeus, who, who, who was nothing more than a, a pencil-sharpening general a paper pusher. Uh, he didn't see much combat. And when he did see, get close to it in Iraq, he helped actually train what became Al Qaeda in Iraq. And that morphed into, when they went into Syria, that morphed into uh, ISIL or ISIS, uh, which means there is no uh, difference between Al Qaeda and ISIL. Uh, he, he apparently doesn't know that. Maybe that's why he became the head of the CIA. My dog would do a better job as a CIA director than David <laughs> Petraeus. Yet we hear uh, uh, John McCain and Lindsey Graham always referring to this convicted criminal Petraeus as my, they always say, our dear General Petraeus. I'm waiting for the three of them to go s start shopping for furniture together at Ikea. <laughs> uh, you know, the, 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 the thing is, and, and we, the current director of the CIA is even worse, John Brennan, who was the CIA direct, uh, uh, station chief in Riyadh, in the 90s, he's rumored to have converted. You know, he went to he went to Fordham, so he went to a Jesuit uh, college. But the word is he actually converted to uh, to. Uh, now, there's a real question that should be asked. Uh, he, a former FBI agent, said that Brennan converted to Islam, and he was actually paid the pil made the pilgrimage to Mecca. Really, really? yeah. So his name should wow. be El Hajj John Brennan. He made the <laughs> pilgrimage. And uh, and he's the single handedly has has uh, given the Saudis everything they want. Uh, he's he's been providing uh, weapons to uh, ISIL in Iraq and Syria and Al Qaeda and uh, the Al Nusra Front and the Khorasan group. All these radicals. And and yet when asked how many moderates <laughs> the U.S. has trained in Syria. The head of the Special Operation Command said four or five. That's because all the training and money is going to the to the ISIL group, the beheaders, the rapists, the yes. kidnappers, yes. Uh, uh, the murderers, and, and people that blow up these these ancient uh, relics that have survived thousands of years, but just can't survive a, 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 another CIA funded group. Well, of course, we have been allied uh, since they created the petrodollar. We've been allied with Saudi Arabia, the most repressive. The most fundamentalist of any of the Islamic regimes, the Wahhabis, Wahhabis there in uh, Saudi Arabia, they have more beheadings than ISIS. And with everybody being concerned about the humanitarian crisis that's going on with this war in Syria, did you hear anything in the GOP about Saudi Arabia's invasion of Yemen and targeting civilians in Yemen, their southern neighbor? I didn't hear anything at all about that, uh, Wayne. No, and we and we know the Saudis have been lobbying against the release of those 28 pages uh, mm -hmm. and, and helping them as APAC because when Lindsey Graham said it, it'll harm U.S. relations with other allies in the region, well, I've heard through the great mind people have read that report. The other allies he's referring to is Kuwait. Remember the country we, uh, the old man Bush went in and saved from Saddam Hussein, Qatar, where we have two major U.S. military bases, and of course Israel, which is a absolute ally uh, of Saudi Arabia because yes. they want to jointly attack Iran. Uh, the truth be said, Iran is one of the most moderate uh, nations in the Middle East. It should be our natural ally. They're fighting yes. ISIL. They're fighting Al Qaeda. They always have. They helped. They try to help us fight Al Qaeda in Afghanistan. I don't think we took full advantage of that offer because uh, Cheney and his neocons would never do any kind of business with Iran. So uh, it's a it's it's a mess. You know when Donald Trump says our you know our our policy in the Middle East is a mess. He's he's right. He just has the wrong he has the wrong solutions. I'm afraid for it yes. uh, because he doesn't understand the mess. But he does at least he understands it's a mess. He doesn't know why there's a mess and what caused the mess. Well, certainly, what you're talking about with Iran should be one of our natural allies. Of course, you know everybody wants to think about 
Israel and the Arabs as being antithetical to each other.